coverage of high school gymnastics. Tonight it's a dual meet from the Northwest Suburban Conference featuring the Champion Farm Rebels and the Maple Grove Crimson. John Jacobson along with Debbie Rasmussen in the first dual meet of the season, Debbie, for both of these teams, both pretty young teams for the most part. And you, you get a base right away with your first meet. Find out where you can build from there. Exactly. This first meet of the season is probably not going to, you know, create their highest scores, but it's going to give them a starting point and know where they need to build from and what they need to work on to increase those scores. So for Maple Grove, it's a first home meet, and that's always a fun thing to, to be able to um, – you know, participate in front of your home crowd and your fans and your family and friends and stuff. So it's a good meet to get the jitters out and it's a great start to see where you need to build from. Maple Grove will feature a returning state gymnast. As a matter of fact, a four time returning state gymnast and Sasha Thompson will talk a lot about her. She's a senior, but the rest of their starting varsity lineup, uh, Debbie, uh, a junior, Two freshmen and an eighth grader, so a pretty young team this year for the Crimson. It is a really young team, and so that is a little bit more difficult to build um, that team around because they might not have the experience and the difficulty needed to get those big scores, but that's why this first meet at home is so important to just get the jitters out, see what your, you know, the events that you're good at and the events you might need to um you know, increase your difficulty to increase those scores. And Champlain Park's lot of, lost a lot of good gymnasts the last couple of years. Nine girls who were in the state meet over the last two seasons have graduated and are back. And so, uh, again, a, a younger team than, than Jen Winey has had for years as well. Let's look at our rotation for tonight for uh, the varsity. Champlain Park will start out on the bars as they're going through their warm-ups right now. And then Maple Grove on the vault. We'll see Champlain Park on the vault. Maple Grove on the bars, then go to the floor exercise for Champlain Park, then back-to-back -back beam routines for Maple Grove and Champlain Park's varsity, and the Crimson varsity finishing up here on the floor. We're going to take a timeout. We'll come back with that first rotation. Champlain Park up on the uneven bars. Gymnastics up next on CCX. CCX Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. But did you know you can sign up for those stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? Simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button and from there choose which notifications you want to receive. Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports, and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org. Grove High School, Champlain Park and Maple Grove. Gymnastics, we are underway. As we mentioned, the Rebels will be starting out tonight on the vault. Their first varsity competitor, Mira Kohler. She's the second year on the team. Just learned bars at the end of last season, working toward kips and advanced swinging elements, and uh, she has the first routine of the night. You know, um, watching her in warm-ups, that dismount was giving her a little bit of trouble, and boy, did she end up just nailing that one. That was good. You'll see here that it is called, um, excuse me, a flyaway in the tuck position. And sometimes if you let go too early, you can kind of face plant. If you let go too late, you can end up on, on your backside. So um, it was good to see that she was able to do that really, really well. Bars is hard, and, and to only have been doing bars for two years, she did an amazing job. It's, you know, to learn to kip and swing and keep that momentum moving throughout the entire bar routine, that's tough. It takes a lot of um, abdominal and upper body strength. It wasn't one of my strong suits back in the day. <laughs> Maybe I didn't have the stomach muscles that <laughs> needed for that. <coughs> Score of 3.95 for Mira. Teresa Ung will be next for Champlain Park. Also a second year gymnast, a sophomore. Mira, a junior. Started with a back pullover into um, back hip circle. And there is a long hang back pullover again. Getting ready for her dismount. There it is, nice job, <laughs> right where the coach. The mat kind of shifts, so the coach is gonna stand there to make sure that that mat doesn't, you know, slide forward and things, but there again, so this is a 
Long hang back pullover and she'll go right into another back hip circle, getting ready for the flyaway dismount. Nice job. And again, you know, bars is hard to get those big scores if, if you j just have been doing it for a couple of years. They don't have the fluidity or the connections, might, don't have the difficulty that we will probably see from Sasha in a little bit. But to only be doing this and starting when you're in high school, that's a good, this is hard. Bars are hard. <coughs> a score for Teresa of 4.15. And now McKenna Bloom. Beautiful form here. She's got such great form. Straight legs, pointed toes. She does that toe on, and she's going to be doing just a, another. Takes a little extra string, but no deduction for that. Back hip circle, getting ready for her flyaway. Just a teeny tiny touch there by the coach. I'm not sure if they'll actually see that. There is a small deduction <clears throat> if the coach does help them out in a, a skill, but um, when you're kind of starting out and learning, you want to be better be safe than sorry. Our meet judges tonight are Kelsey Koppel, Emily Moline, and Nicole Alley. Emily and uh, Nicole right now working this apparatus as you look at part of McKenna's routine again, the third year Rebels gymnast. Just has awesome form. I love that on bars. 4.95. Now Melina Ong, she's the cousin of Teresa, senior captain. This is her sixth year on the team. You can tell she's a bar worker starting off with those that switch kip mount. She's going to do a rear uprights here into another one. Back hip circle and she's going to cast. Lastly, a long hang kip. Two long hang kips. That is awesome. Wow. She works so well on those bars. One thing that we want to look for in the bar routine is that there are no stops. That one move goes straight into that next move and she really did that quite nicely. You'll see here, there's her toe on and she's gonna do a rear uprise into that back hip, oops, sorry, into a second rear uprise. Now we're gonna go immediately into two long hand kips. There's one, she casts right away. Two, form is great. Nice high tuck flyaway dismount. That was a great routine. Her, her, the height on that flyaway, she was almost as, as high as the um, top bar. Scored <laughs> a 7.65. Champion Park's fifth and final varsity competitor is Kaylee O'Brien. One year on the team. The one uh, gymnast with club background on this team for Rebels this year, Deb. And you can definitely tell she just did a hit. Oh, darn, she was going so well for that. She did a handstand pirouette on the low bar, which in itself is difficult. Again, beautiful form, working super well to a nice stuck landing. She just had that little teeny mistake there. Um, but yeah, you, anytime you see a gymnast that can cast a handstand and keep that moving, um, then you know there is there is club experience there. And that makes it easier for coaches. You'll see right here, cast handstand, does that pirouette right into another kip. This is a toe circle, back toe circle, and she just barely missed, just over overdid that rear upright so she wasn't able to um, stop that, but here are those two really nice long hang kips and a nice tough flyaway dismount and a great landing. I'm going to hold on just for a second to get Kaylee's score before we go to break, and then we'll have Maple Grove coming up and she'll, on vault. She'll have a small deduction for the break in the movement, but it's not like a fall, like if you, you know, if you fall off and you lose a half a tenth. Um, and then will she get the credit for, you know, finishing that? I think she will because she basically just overdid it. So she finished the trick and then just, you know, kind of had too much momentum going on. But another gymnast with beautiful form. And her score is 6.95. 
So that is uh, the first rotation of the night. We will take a time out. We'll come back. Maple Grove up on the vault in just a moment. for Champlain Park on the bars to open up tonight's meet, 23.70. As we go to rotation two, Maple Grove on the ball. Our first vaulter, freshman, Ava Plath. Wow, that was a beautiful half on, half off. She's got great form and a nice, solid landing. In the vault, we're looking at the pre-flight. You want to have air time from the time you hit the board before you touch the vaulting platform. She's going to need straight legs, pointed toes, and the ever-needed stuck landing, which I think she did beautifully. It always amazes me, these girls, that wall is like right there, and they aren't even phased by it. Again, another really nice, strong start for Maple Grove on the vault. 7.925 on the first fault. We'll see the score for Ava here on ball two. We definitely want straight arms, straight legs as always, and you kind of want to have a distance from the vaulting platform. You want to be able to, you know, kind of travel. So the farther you can land on the backside of that platform, again, the higher the score. Annika Dufault, gymnast number two. 7.9 for Ava on her second ball. That was, again, another really nice ball. What she's got on that pre-flight is such a great body position. She's almost in a full handstand. By the time she hits the platform, you'll see here, she does a complete half on. Just that little step to the side. Monica is just an eighth grader. So her first home meet here tonight. You could tell there she just had a little trouble with the run. Sometimes when your feet are a little off, she didn't have the power that she had in that first fault. But still, it wasn't a bad fault. You'll see here she kind of, you know, questions that. She's not quite in that position. Um, again, another nice fault. But I think the first one's going to be a little bit stronger in the score. Yeah, first one scored a 7.975. Vault 2. 7.8. Lily Fool is up next. Freshman. Doing a, a handspring vault. And what we want to look for here is when you hit that vaulting platform, you really want to be in a full body extension with almost that handstand position with a strong block. And then you just want to kind of float to your landing on the other side. And she did a pretty good job at that, you'll see here. There's a um, little pike in the hips, but the afterflight is beautiful. 7.55 for Lily's first fault, and here's her second attempt. Very nice. A uh, little bit stronger in that pre-flight. Had a great block and a nice, nice landing. Just a small step on that. Again, it's the one of the four apparatuses where you get two shots at it and your high score is the one that counts toward your team score. Mm -hmm. Five gymnasts competing. Top four scores count toward the team score. You kind of get a mulligan or a do-over. Right. Not a bad thing. 7.4 for bolt two. Danica Hahn, her first ball. That was amazing. I don't know where they could find a deduction on that handspring vault. That was absolutely fantastic. She had great form. Her pre-flight was like she's floating to that platform, has a super strong block. And if you'll notice, she doesn't budge on that landing. Really, truly, I don't think you could do it much better than that. 8.15 for vault one. 
second vault had a little bit more distance. Um, she had a little bit more power, but she did take a little step on the landing. However, up till that landing, exceptional vaults. That is a pretty, handsprings when they're done correctly, they're beautiful vaults here. Just float, block, and land. 8.25 is a little higher <laughs> score. Then like a second vault. And now the senior and six-year varsity gymnast, Sasha Thompson. She's going to do a Sukahara vault, which is a roundup on the platform and then a backflip off. And great height, great distance. Um, small step on that landing. This gal has power. She is, is you know, just kind of like a little mighty giant, I guess you could call her. She's just so strong and powerful. Look at that block and the height that she gets on that vault. You'll see here, great. It'll be fun to see if she ends up doing a pike or at the end of the season, I think she could even rock a layout because she's so powerful on this vault. 9.00 on vault one. Finished 13th in the state all around last year. That was an even better vault. You'll also notice she landed in the middle of the um, mat. So if you're off to the side, especially when you start watching the Olympics in college, they have lines now. So the fact that she sticks this right in the center of that, I think this one should be a little higher maybe. Look at that smile, that's fun. One score up, 9.2 from one of the judges, but definitely a uh, higher scoring vault. 9.15 for vault two for Sasha Thompson. So a nice finish, 8.25 for Dana Kahan, and then really Sasha Thompson. Really fun to watch her vaults develop over the years. If, if she stays with the tack, all she's got to do is clean it up a tiny bit, stick that landing, she's golden. You know, if she chooses to end up with a layout or a pike, which I think, you know, she could she could rock that Cheney New <laughs> layout vault, which would be amazing. But, oh, she's fun to watch. We'll take a time out. Rotation three is up next. We'll come back to the ball. Champlin Park up next on CCX. CCX Media, your source for great local programming, is now available on Roku and Apple TV. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on-demand library, including daily newscasts and full sporting events. To find the app, go to the store and search CCX and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content. Now available on Roku and Apple TV. There's a score from Maple Grove and their vaults that they just completed, 33.3. And now Champlain Park in rotation three will be up on the vault. Mira Kohler will start things off for the Rebels. Hannah Davis, Kaylee O'Brien, Nalita Ong, and McKenna Bloom. Talked about Mira's second year with this program. That just always just amazes me that you, you know, gymnastics is a tough sport and to just go into it, right. she is obviously such a natural athlete and you can tell here, beautiful half on, half off vault. I love the lines that creates. She's a little bit, you know, I hate to say she's tall because she's probably not, you know, that tall, but she just creates such a really nice line. So, um, did a very nice job, just a little step to the side on the landing and, and stuff. So the nice thing about vault is you do get two. So you've done your first vault and you might need, you know, to just clean up some things. You get that second chance and we'll see here. She wants to do that, make that pre-flight a little crisper, a little quicker of a twist. Her first vault went for a 7.7 .7 score. Again, a very, very nice fault as well. Um, just needs to control that block a little bit more. She can tell she's really strong. I think she could even do a full twist off of this because she has great power. 
and just takes a couple of steps forward, but she is a pretty gymnast to watch. Anna Davis will be next. Second year gymnast. Second year on this team. First time we'll see her tonight. Really nice um, half on half off. She's got a great stuck landing. Um, needs to get a little bit more distance on the back side of that fault, but her form, awesome. You'll see here, she's gonna do that half on. She has great form, really nice pointed toes, and you cannot land about better than that. That was beautiful. One more vault for the junior. Mir Kohler's second vault, by the way, 7.45, 7 so her first vault was the better of the two. And score 7.5 for Hannah Davis on her first vault, and here's vault two. She had a little bit more um, energy in that vault, was able to travel on the back side of that vault a little more, just a, a little step to the side here, but you'll see she just great strong arms, beautiful form, and the travel distance is um, a little bit better than that first vault and a tiny step to the side, but I think overall it was a cleaner vault than that first one. Nice job. Next up is Kaylee O'Brien, 7.55, so just a little bit higher, but definitely higher score for Hannah Davis on ball two. In warm-ups, we watched her do what's called a Yurchenko start. She does a round-up back handspring, and um, I'm not exactly sure what this vault is worth, but boy, was that pretty. It is a tough vault because you're running. She does a round off onto the springboard, back handspring onto the platform. Arms were straight, body was straight, and the landing was really good. As we talked about on the uh, bars, Deb, she's the one girl with the heads come out of club gymnastics, mm -hmm. so a little more experience, a little more uh, Has technique a, in her background, yeah. seven point eight five for a little first bit, one. you know, more difficulty. She's another mm -hmm. gymnast that could definitely do a twist after this because it's just nice. Look at that; it just floats down to to the landing. That's beautiful. Champlain Park was was hoping to have a returning state gymnast this year, Katie Johnson, who was a junior a year ago, but battled back injuries all season and just was going to take a long time to recover, decided not to come out for her senior year, and um, so that's a, a tough break for, for her is. not to be able to compete in her senior year. Yep. But you go through a lot uh, physically sometimes, and it's... And sometimes you're better just being done, right? Being done, Which yep. Is and sad you to don't say, want to risk a permanent injury. Yeah. These girls are still so young that um, it, it's a tough decision to make. But for you know the long-term health of the gymnast, it's probably the best decision that you could make. But it's hard. Kelly O'Brien, second vault, seven point eight. Here's Melina Young. She does a half on half off on that vault. Again, another gymnast that has great form. She just needs to make that backside twist a little quicker so that she can land that without taking that step to the side. You can tell she's got a strong run. Here is that It's kind of a quarter on with a, a half twist, just those couple steps to the side. Again, it just amazes me that I, I don't know if I could vault that close to the wall. <laughs> that would be Scare you. like a freaky thing. And every gym we go to, that's what it is. 8.05 for Molina's first vault. Beautiful. That was a dynamite second vault, you tell. She just looked a little bit more confident and stronger. She had a great pre-flight, super strong block, and she was able to complete that twist and just nail that landing. That's the kind of landing that you want. 
Kenneth Bloom will be next. 8.15. So Lee Dong, tenth of a point better on their second vault. McKenna had a great first vault. She, again, is a gymnast that has really lovely form. You'll see she's just so straight. Her arms are straight, her legs are straight, body's tight, and then just a little too much power and had to take that step forward. First ball scored an eight, one. Excuse me, Deb. Nope. She just—I was going to say—try to clean that one up, and I think I think that was well done. She only had the one step. She wasn't quite to the side as she was on the first one, so I think that was a good vault. Hold on for a moment to give you her score. As a Champlain Park completes its second rotation. Look at they have like a touchdown dance that the girls were doing there. Great form, nice twist, just that step backwards. You got to find that happy medium where you have don't have so much power to take two step, you know, take that step forward or enough power to take that step backwards. 7.9 her score for vault two. So we are through a uh, Champlain Park second rotation, Maple Grove. Second rotation is the ball, uh, excuse me, the uneven bars, and we'll have that for you right after this. to the uneven bars, Maple Grove Varsity. Ava Plath leading things off. As you see their lineup, same order as we had uh, on the vault and now on the bars here for the Crimson. She does very well on the bars and, and I love that. You know, she only had one teeny tiny stop on that top, that top bar, but her hips go into her back hip circles. There's not any stopping. The, she goes directly from the toe on to the long hand hip cast. Beautiful form, long hand kip. Just that tiny little adjustment to the hands there in a big cast, gorgeous tuck flyaway. Teeny, teeny tiniest of steps. Nice start for Maple Grove. To me, bars is the hardest event, or maybe it was just my hardest event, but you know, it, it takes strength. It takes, um, you know, agility, no fear, takes strength. <laughs> More strength than anything else, right? Yes, it totally does. It totally does because it's your upper body. Um, it's your, it, the, stu the core muscles that you need to be good on bars too is, is there's a reason these girls condition nonstop. 6.575 for Ava. And now Annika Dufault. It's also an event where to get the difficulty, you have to be able to do the trick where like on the balance beam, we can now get difficulty in our jumps and leaps and turns, but in the bars, you can't, you can't dance your way through something. Beautiful kip to another cast kip, nice toe on. Here's her long end kip cast right away. This is kind of what we're talking about. Movements just leading right into one another. Gorgeous. Kip to free hip to another kip to a flyaway dismount. That was nice. There were no stops, no adjustments. It just one move went into the next. See, there is her kip. She does a back hip circle, cast right into that toe on, which is a lot harder than it looks, but this sequence was beautiful. Long hand kip cast. 
She does a rear uprise here right into a back hip circle, cast immediately into another long hang hip. And then right to that flyaway, tiny step forward on that dismount, beautiful routine. A couple of good, uh, good routines to start for Maple Grove. Yes. Set the base, pace for them. You know, they, they might not have the difficulty, the really smooth, the handstands, but what they do, they do very well, and it just flows, and that's really important. Legs are straight, toes are pointed, arms are straight, and one move flows into the next move, into the next move. So when you don't have the difficulty, what you can do is keep it clean, and that's exactly what their first two girls did. This was a very nice routine. You see a lot of uh, pink in the gym tonight. It's a uh, cancer fundraiser tonight for the, uh, oh. the gymnastics program. 6.85 for Annika. Now here's Lily Full. And Lily started out with the switch kip, which is one of the requirements, the change of direction that not a lot of the gymnasts <coughs> do, but she did beautifully. And again, just another gymnast that just moves so nice. That was probably one of the highest flyaways I think I've seen. That was above the bar when she when she released that. Again, beautiful little bar routine there. What she did do was she did show a change of direction, which is a requirement. Not a lot of gymnasts, if they don't have the difficulty, can do that. Here is a switch kip, so she switches the directions. Cast into the back hip circle, right into that toe on, and the rest part was just pretty. Rear uprise to a second rear uprise into that back hip circle, cast. Long hang kip, big cast. Look at how high that flyaway was. Nice job. Next up, Danica Hahn. Score of 7.1 for Lily Foles so behind so far of the three Crimson Gymnasts. She's Danica, we saw with an 8.25 earlier on the vault. She just has beautiful form. I don't think that she ever has a separation in her legs, and that layout flyaway was very nice. Shoulders were a little low, so she had to take a tiny, tiny step forward. But um, she just, again, you know, I'm so impressed with the Maple Grove team. They might not have the di difficulty, but what they do, they do so well. Here's that kip, and she will change direction, go into another kip immediately. Back kip circle, here is her rear uprise. Goes right into a second. Cast right away into that long hang kip, and here is that Beautiful laid out flyaway dismount. Teeny, teeny, tiny step to the left. That was nice. Nice routine. 7.6 the score for Danica, and here's Sasha Thompson. She does a kip cut catch for her start. That's a release move. Switch kip here. Long hang kip cast. Here comes her giant swings. These are beautiful, and she will do a, wow, that was gorgeous, a full twisting flyaway. I can't wait to see that on replay. That was like a slow motion float to the bottom. Beautiful routine, wow. So one of the requirements are handstands, which she shows us that we do have, that those giant swings were wonderful. But here's a kip cut catch, which can be part of a release move, and she'll cast and do switch kip. Changes direction, right to that toe on. Just gonna cast into handstand for these giant swings. Forms great, but watch this. This was spectacular. Beautiful, full twisting lay layout flyaway dismount. I mean, the layout alone is tough, and then you throw a full twist on that. Anytime you add twisting elements, you really increase the difficulty. Sasha scores an 8.70 for that routine. Rotation five is up next. We will move to the floor. Champlin Park will be up next. More high school gymnastics from the Northwest Suburban Conference on CCX after this.
score for Maple Grove on the Myers, 30.25. The Crimson have taken a lead. Halfway through, about eight points ahead of Champlin Park. We are through rotation five. Champlin Park up on the floor to size, and here's yeah, Kohler. First tumbling pass for her, Deb. She does round up two back handsprings into a back tuck, and um, great, great height on that one. And this is my favorite um, event to watch because you really get to see the personality of the gymnast shine. There's her second tumbling pass. She does a punch front dive roll into a cartwheel. With that big smile, she's getting ready to head into the corner. We have leaps and jumps and turns that are a requirement. Things need to be connected. Anytime we add a twisting element to things, beautiful aerial cartwheel there. Sets up for her third and final tumbling pass. Round up back handspring into again the height on that those back tacks is really impressive. Nice routine. I love the choreography in that too. Here's that first tumbling pass. She does round up two back handspring. Watch the height. That's just again really awesome. Here she does that punch front into the dive roll and then comes up with the cartwheel. And then finally again, um, this is round off single back handspring and she just has a huge, huge back flip. Very fun. The, the gymnast will be doing three tumbling passes, one of which has to be in a forward You'll see a lot of girls doing a punch front, um, possibly front handspring into something, but two of the passes can be tumbling backwards. One must be forward. McKenna Bloom is up next. Score of 6.825 for Amira Kohler. Back hands, round up back handspring into a pike back flip, which is nice. Coach John Whiney is saying that McKenna's really worked hard to improve her, her leaps and her dance, which obviously a huge part of floor exercise, right? It is. You know, you can tell she's doing twisting elements in those. She did full twisting tuck jump, full twisting wolf jump. She had a half twist straddle jump. With the connection, she entered that, that switch leap first. So that is increasing the difficulty for the score. Just like on the balance beam, the gymnasts have to do at least a full turn. A lot of them will do a one and a half or possibly two. A double turn, there's that punch front dive roll into the cartwheel. Last tumbling pass, round up two back handsprings into that walkout position. Nice ending for her. You could see that the, you know, she did get some um, more difficulty in the jumps and leaps. Um, her tumbling passes had, the, you know, they each, the two of them had a flip in on the second one. She's going to want to increase that difficulty a little bit to end with. But she starts out really strong. Round of back handspring into back flip, kind of in that tuck position. And then she has nice punch front forward roll right into the cartwheel. And the last one, the round of two back handsprings, which again, she shows good form. Toes are pointed and she just kind of does a little walk out at the end there. She should be very happy with that. Anytime you come to, an, uh, it's not your home gym. You're dealing, some, sometimes they'll have the same equipment that you do, but a lot of times it's just a little bit different. 7.35 is Hannah Davis is up next. She has the best smile. Round up back handspring, back flip. It's 
showing us just some of her originality here. There's the one and a half turn, nicely done. Switch leap, full twisting tuck jump, good combination for her. Nice punch front, forward roll, cartwheel, good form. Getting ready to get into the corner for her third and final tumbling pass. Round of two back handsprings. Nice ending position there. Just kind of ran out of steam. And that's the one thing that you, when you know, you're in those first couple meets, you're not quite in the physical condition that you want to be. You might not be um, as conditioned and, and some, you know, you don't know if these girls are working out all the time, but you can see this first tumbling pass, really nice. A little bit low in the shoulders. Second tumbling pass, she does that punch front right into that forward roll right into the cartwheel. The last time we passed, it looked like she might have landed a little um, weird on the second one. So she just kind of ran out a little bit of steam there. Yeah. I can't tell if well, she's, got, got a, she's got a hurt foot anyways. And, and Coach, in his notes, said that in she is, is working through asthma to in oh. build her endurance. If you saw when she came off the floor, it looked like somebody handed her her inhaler. Yep, she has it in her hand yeah, right now. Yeah, it has it in her hand actually. now. And so they, I mean, that's going to make a big difference. Holy and cow. this event, obviously, more than, than any of the and others. Yeah, this, this takes the most endurance as far as, and if you if you have any type of issue like that, this can be a tough event. Right. 6.25 was Hannah's score. Now, Melina Ong. Starting out with a absolutely beautiful double handstand pirouette right into a full twisting tuck jump. That's a nice combination that should score her some good points. Round up that handspring back tuck. They do have to show a change of direction on the floor as well as the balance beam. You can't do everything standing up. You have to show some creativity and, and do some movements that are down on the floor as well as the balance beam. Second tumbling pass. Really nice high punch front into that cart forward roll cartwheel. I love when gymnasts smile. I say that every year. I just think it's really fun when, because then you know they're having a good time out there. Round up, two back handsprings into a walkout. Great form. There's her one and a half pirouette. Nice little ending position there. That was a good routine. Senior captain Melina Ong. Fourth gymnast for the Rebels. We'll take a look at uh, her routine again. She's a strong tumbling. She's got great power in that back handspring. Night height, nice height in that back flip. Really good height on the front flip, right into the forward roll cartwheel. Toes are pointed, no deductions there. And then the last tumbling pass, she has a beautiful round of two back handsprings, and we call it into the walk-up position. Again, great form, and she just steps backwards. <laughs> Waiting for that score. 8.05 for <laughs> Molina. And now Kaylee O'Brien. Four already her strongest event, according to uh, Coach Wania. And close to full difficulty. And she looked to upgrade as the season goes on into more difficulty and what she'll add to this. Again, this is only meet one for uh, these teams for the dual meet season. Yeah. 
beautiful round off one and a half twist. So she opens up with a double full turn into a one and a half twist. Great form. You'll see that they have that crash mat there. That is acceptable um, to have in on the floor. It just kind of helps protect the ankles and the legs. She did a great leap sequence here. Beautiful wow. layout, layout front right into a punch front. Love the choreography. She is having a ball out there. Round up two back hamstrings into a nice layout. Really nicely she has done by Kaylee O'Brien. Great form and really fun dance. You, you know, this is where you can kind of tell that private club experience. She's very polished. And here's this first one. It's a round off one and a half twist. Nice landing. It's kind of a blind landing. You don't know where you are because you're you're landing forward. Lay up punch front into a tuck punch front. Nice job. And here, lastly, round of two back hand rings. Nice layout, good form, pointed toes as always. It was wonderful. We'll hang on just for a moment to give you our score for Kaylee before we take a break. Should score pretty well. I think so. She had the twisting, she had the front tumbling, she had the difficulty in the leaps and jumps, the connections were there. Eight point four five. I can see from one judge. I can't quite see the other score. Isn't it? Um. Point two five. It looks uh, three. She's flipping again. Eight point three. three. So eight point three seven five. The score for Kaylee O'Brien. We will take another time. I will be back. Allen's beam. Maple Grove up next on CCX. Jacobson with Debbie Rasmussen back here at Maple Grove High School. You see the floor exercise score for Champlain Park. They're junior varsity competing right now. That's what you see in the background. And so we're through five rotations. We move to the balance beam as we continue with our varsity competition. And Maple Grove up first. And again, they're the same lineup they've had tonight. Same five girls. Not a, a large team at all for this Maple Grove program. I, I talked to uh, head coach Sabrina Chapman before the meet and said COVID really wiped out numbers in high school gymnastics in a lot of programs. When the clubs had to shut down, a lot of girls didn't come back and instead mm -hmm. of maybe going to high school, they just were done with gymnastics and that's hurt. Uh, Maple Grove, Champlain Park, a lot of schools. Yeah, and you know, just I mean, COVID changed the world in a yeah, lot of ways right, and right. stuff, but it's, it's I, I I'm kind of sad if I'm going to be quite honest. You know, we had such a great Olympic year um, watching the the Olympians that are now competing in the NCAA. You think that that would get more hype for this sport. Now we're coming on to, you know, the Olympics in 2024 and, and a lot of those returning girls are going to be there. So I'm hoping that that creates more interest for the sport. And it may be just a dip too, right? You'll see those younger gymnasts, maybe younger girls in the clubs right now. Yep. But the fall short term was for to really hurt these these high school programs. Yes. You saw Ava's uh, routine a moment ago. 
couple she did, falls. She had a couple of falls. But got back on. That is, you know, anytime you fall, that it kind of breaks your concentration. But I love a gymnast that gets back up there with the confidence and, and just keeps going. You know, I way many years ago, we had a girl fall. She ran out. <laughs> you know, she finished and stuff. Um, she, she's just a, she's a gymnast that has beautiful form. On the balance beam, we are, there's the ever dreaded full turn. Every single beam routine has to have that in it. You have to have a dance acro series. You have to have connections in your jumps and leaps, as we'll see right here. Split leap into a three quarter wolf jump. Nice job. Just a little balance check there. Here, this is going to be a cartwheel sequence, and you want that foot to swing through. Oh, gosh, almost hung on to that one. So you do a cartwheel, swing that foot through, and then you do what's called a round off. You're landing on two feet. And um, again, you know, had the unfortunate fall. Nice back flip this well, Good routine up until that point. But what's great is we're early in the season. You can afford to have those falls where, you know, you're going to work, do more numbers in the gym, be more consistent. Here's that really nice split jump into three-quarter wolf jump there. And a nice back flip dismount. Real solid on that landing. We talk a lot about the beam is four inches wide and four feet off the ground, and, and it's about the width of one of their feet. And when you're doing tricks where you're landing on two feet, this makes it a little bit more difficult. You loved this event. Though. I yeah. did. Yeah. I did. It was a love-hate relationship. <laughs> <laughs> it was my best event, but I hated practicing on it. But it's a vent that doesn't take up her body strength. So for me, it was a win. <laughs> now the one fall that, that dropped her score a little bit, but she's going to score in the upper sixes, it looks like. She does a squat mount immediately into a wolf mount. Nice full turn. Watched her warm up here. She does a standing back flip. She nailed it in warm up. So hopefully, nice job. Just a little step backward, but not a big deduction for that. Switch leap into jump split. She's gonna do that same as we can. Cart will swing that foot through, plant it, round off. There you go. That's how that should be done. Really nice. She does a half twist straddle jump immediately into the back flip. So that is a nice connection. Good routine. Good job by Lily Fole. Our first two scores, by the way, for uh, Maple Grove. Ava Platt, 6.4. Hanukkah Dufold, 6.775. This always amazes me. I mean, that's hard to do on the floor, let alone up on the balance beam. I never did that. There's that really nice twisty. You know, she does like that half twist straddle jump immediately into the back flip off the side. Watching the warm-ups, I didn't know she was going to dismount, and I thought, what the heck? <laughs> and I love that combination. It's very unique. There's support for the cancer with all their pink ribbons, the pink hearts on their cheek. I know that they're doing some raffles here tonight to raise money for that, too. It's a great cause. I saw one score go up, 8.15. They might be having a little bit of judging conference. I think it should be higher okay. than that, personally. You know how I get when they don't give the scores. I would have put You're that. You're always advocating for the gymnasts, and there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> 7.9 from Judge Chu, so 
He averaged the two, 8.025, according to my Robbinsdale math. <laughs> now it's Danica Hahn. Danica in warm-ups watching her. She's a beautiful beam work. She has great dance, a really lovely toe point. Nice. She does a beautiful split jump into three-quarter wolf jump. Switch leap immediately into a wolf jump again, doing a, a really nice combination there. No hesitation, she'll get full credit for that. Here's her cartwheel. Swing, ooh. Oh, darn, almost had that. The way you wanna perform that sequence is you land that first foot, that second foot swings right away without planting it, and then you do the round off afterwards. She'll lose five tenths for the fall, but she's just really pretty to watch on this event. There's her change of direction. And again, that same straddle jump with a quarter twist right into the back flip off the side. Well, Danny Hahn gets back on, finishes up. We'll get it again. Split jump. Here's the full twisting wolf jump. That was nice. Didn't even have to have a balance check there. Switch leap, wolf jump. You want those um, leaps to be above hip level and splits to be in a 180. There, there's kind of a, there can be deductions if they're not. But here's her straddle jump with the quarter turn right into the back flip. Nice job. She landed with her chest really high. Um, no deductions there, just a tiny step. Sasha Thompson, the fifth and final competitor for Maple Grove. Starting Finished out. ninth in the state in Class AA in this event last year. Oh, that's... She's a... Solid beam routine. Anytime a gymnast works in relevé, which she just showed us right there, that's pretty awesome. Danica Hahn scores 7.80. She does that back handspring, but what makes that so difficult, she doesn't walk out. She lands on two feet. Here's her standing back flip. Solid. Wow, she nailed that. Beautiful three-quarter straddle jump to three-quarter wolf jump. Very difficult combination. She didn't have any hesitation in between. Full credit for the connection. The ever-dreaded full turn, which really nice. Wolf jump, split jump again, nice job. Wow, what makes that so incredibly difficult. She does a switch leap, half twist, full twisting, backflip dismount. It just explodes off the beam, she, too. She right? does, and you know, she's barely taller than the balance beam. She has so much power. She's so fun to watch. I'm going to be very upset if it doesn't give a score that I think it should. Here we go, right here. There wasn't even a bobble on that. That was absolutely beautiful. There's that full turn. Teeny tiniest of corrections there. And you mentioned the, the no bobble. That tells you how strong she is too, because if you're a little weak, you're gonna you're yes. definitely gonna bobble. There. Yes. It it doesn't take much, a little tiny dip in the shoulder, and you've got a correction, or you're standing next to the beam, you, you fall off. But she was so focused and centered, and that backflip was probably one of the best that we've seen in a long time. Nothing. It was just like, oh, every day, I just do backflips on the beam. No big deal. <laughs> really, really a good routine. Her score at state last year, 9.15, has said that 
got her ninth place in the state meet. We'll see where she starts out again. This is uh, early December. She's got a long uh, couple of months to work and uh, and get even higher. But this is a, I'd say this is pretty good for December eighth. This is really good for December eighth. Um, you know, I don't know how much more, you know, she could um, maybe add another back handspring as a connection in there or something, but that was really, really well done. Judges are still conferring on her score. So we'll hold on for just a moment. You know, you know I, I talked to her dad we got, while we have a minute mm -hmm. about what she's going to do next year, and she's, he was telling me about acro tumbling, which is a, an emerging sport in uh, women's uh, for women that they're giving scholarships to at a number of schools that kind of combines the elements of gymnastics mm -hmm. a little bit cheerleading a lot of tum tumbling obviously mm -hmm. the name would imply and she's likely going to do something like that next year at uh, a lot of schools she's already talked to well and um if you if you look it up they have the the base and the flyers and she's definitely going to be a, a flyer um it it is like taking cheerleading and gymnastics and putting it together because um you have to be super strong to do any of that and then you're trusting the bottom person that's throwing you up and catching you and balancing and and all that kind of stuff um, it's it's kind of fun. It's it's new. You don't see much of it, but I think as the popularity grows, we're going to see it more. You know, on um, on sports, college sports, and stuff. If the SEC gets a hold of it, that's such an amazing world. I guess we should say. My nephews went to Auburn, and they're nuts. <laughs> Sasha Thompson scores an 8.925 on the beam. We will take a break. Come back, Champlain Park on the beam in just a moment. score for Maple Grove a moment ago, 31.525. So each team has completed three full rotations. Maple Grove ahead of Champlain Park, five with over nine points as we head into the final rotation for each team. Champlain Park's Miracle leads us off on the Rebels you know, on the belt beam. When you talk about that lead-off gymnast, it might not necessarily be the person that has the most difficulty, but it's the most consistent, and she has done such a great job for Champlain Park being that lead-off gymnast. Right there, beautiful cartwheel sequence. You want them to set the stage so the scores would just continue to go up from there. The gymnast that's hoping to add the front full high superior dismount in the cartwheel series as the season goes on. You can build in those difficulties. Mm -hmm. Again, practice uh, only for a couple of weeks and then meet one here tonight. And I think that, you know, um, was a really nice um, aerial roundup dismount. We did watch her try to do that full twisting, just wasn't quite able to land it. So rather than take that fall, she does the dismount she's comfortable with. And it is something that she can work on through the rest of the season. But her cartwheel sequence was great. Just a nice aerial roundup dismount. Again, she just has confidence and poise and she is a really good lead off performer. Hannah Davis up next for the Rebels. These teams later this season will compete in the Section 5 AA meet that is coming up in mid-February at Elk River High School this year. St. Michael Albertville, the defending section champion. Elk River not part of this section, but they will host that meet. Oh, that's weird. 
because they don't want to play favorites. To well, you don't. Yeah, I don't. You don't want to have necessarily a team that's home on their own home advantage. floor. Yeah. Right? Mira's score, by the way, 6.2, and now Hannah Davis. Starts off with a very nice no-handed mount and goes directly into a straddle jump. Really pretty. That's kind of how that cart was supposed to go. You can tell that she may have had a little balance check, but before she put that foot down, she was ready to go into the next cart roll. Nice job. Nice straddle or split jump into three quarter twisting tuck jump. Getting ready for that dismount. She's doing that cartwheel. Right into that backflip. Nice job. She struggled with that a little bit in warm up, so to see her do it so well, you can tell she's very happy with that. Good routine for her. Nice way to, for her to finish up tonight. Yes. She's pretty to watch, too. She's got great extension, good toe point. Here's that split jump into three quarter twisting tuck jump. And here she goes cartwheel, boom, boom, feet right into the back flip. Just that small step on the landing. She's, she should be really happy with that. It was a nice, nice, nice routine. Let's look at John Whiney, a 26th year now as head coach at Champlain Park. He we're in the state meet three years in a row, 2014, 15, and 16. Coach to state champion Cheney New for several years, three-time state champion. Had finished her high school career with a perfect 10 on the ball. <laughs> it's still what a way amazing. to go out, right? If you watch the beginning of the sports intro here on CCX, you'll see that. I, that was the first 10, I believe. Nice, nice back walk over. Way to hold on to that last one. Kaylee O'Brien is coming off that 8.375 on the floor exercise. Which I thought should have been higher. Should have been higher, right? <laughs> <laughs> She's in practice. She does Really nice job, very good. She does a handstand into a full twisting back flip. She, she reminds me a teeny tiny bit of me because I didn't need my coach to stand there when I did some of my difficulty. I just felt better. So as we were watching her in the warm-ups, you can see he kind of steps in there for a, a just-in-case. She doesn't need it at all, but you just feel a little bit more confident when um, they're there. She's happy with that, you can tell. Did your dad stop reading the Wall Street Journal long <laughs> enough to watch you compete? Yes, because my mom meet? would hit him <laughs> and say, Ron, she's up, and he would put the paper down. And as any father of a gymnast that didn't really understand the sport, it was very hard to go for two hours and watch your daughter for a total of six minutes <laughs> on all four apparatuses. But he was a good dad, and he hung in yep. there. He would watch the beam, not understanding how scared my mom was, and she would watch it with her hands over her face. A kind of bloom patiently waiting while the judges confer on Kaylee O'Brien's score. You know, we should talk about the judges, too, because this is their first few meets of the season, too. So in every year, there are changes. There are new deductions, new combinations, new, new. So, you know, I may be saying that the scores aren't quite high enough in my book, but I guess I should, you know, I haven't, I don't have the new judges book to really 
make that judgment, but I'm going to anyway <laughs> because I can. <laughs> she deserved a nine. You get paid, Deb, to offer your opinion. Yes. For you do what you want. Can you it's taken a long time, though. On, on it this is. This is a little longer than, than usual than now. Normal, it looks like yep. they've, they've come up with a score for Kaylee. It usually happens when there, there's a discrepancy of greater than a half a point. They have to come together, and then really you, you can't have one have a 9 and one have an 8-2. That just doesn't work that way. So. 7.7 seven score for Kaylee O'Brien. Good score for her. Now here's McKenna Bloom. That full turn is just, it's a requirement. Everyone has to do it. It's, you know, we've seen Olympians fall off on that full turn. It's, it's way more difficult than you think. Just a little off on the side there. So this is the tough part. So, you know, she hops back up there. It looks like she's gonna try to do it again. Cart will hold that foot up, swings it through. Boom, round up, nice and solid. Good for her. Able to hang on there. Split jump right into a uh, three-quarter tuck jump. Nice job. Aerial round up, dismount, good landing. I know she had the two falls, but she came back super strong. I love that she repeated it. A lot of people might have just skipped it, but she wanted that, um, those connections and stuff. So you'll see here, she holds that foot up and then does the round off and hangs on. There it is. Nice job. A lot of people would just go, well, I'm not going to do that. And, and yet you need that for to get a higher score. Even though you've had that fall, that is part of your connection series. Melina Ung will be the fifth and final gymnast on the beam for Champlain Park. Very solid gymnast. John says, you know, talking about Melina, just gets the work done. Mary Salas, obviously, is a captain, a great leader mm -hmm. as well. Her older sister had a sister that was a, a captain as well in this program. Wow, that's those can be big shoes to fill, so that speaks a lot of their character. She's just consistent. Again, maybe doesn't have the most difficulty, but she's extremely consistent. Love this back shoulder roll. You don't see it that often, and I think it's so pretty. McKenna Bloom scores 6.4. She does it right into a cartwheel. Nice, solid cartwheel. Split jump. Three-quarter twisting tuck jump. Good combination. That's just pretty, that's an arabesque. You don't see that very often anymore, and when I do, I just think, you know, that's olden day stuff, I love it. Really nice job, I don't know if you saw, she almost missed that second foot <laughs> and stuff, so, um, but she was able to, to um, find the beam and then do that backflip afterwards. Like I said, this is just a back shoulder roll, and it's it's something that's just pretty. It shows a great change of direction, and then she steps right up into that cartwheel. Really nice. And you'll see here, here's that, oh, just, it looked like it was gonna slip off to the side, but she was able to hang on, and good dismount. Champa Barnes varsity complete for the night. April Grove will be up on the uh, floor exercise in a moment. We'll hang on and give you Molina's score. Mm, 
So one score of eight go up. That might be all we see. Wait. Coach is in the way. Let's see. Suspense is it killing is everyone dun, dun, at home. Dun, dun, or at least us. 7.95 7. the okay. score for Molinong. Now we will take a break. Come back. Our final rotation of the night. Maple Grove up on the floor when we come back. Beam. They are complete with tonight's meet at Maple Grove. The eighth and final rotation coming up. Again, the same uh, order that they've had for all of their rotations. Ava Plaff, Annika Dufold, Lily Fold, Danica Hahn, and Sasha Thompson. You look at the co-head coaches, Melody Martin on your left, Sabrina Chapman on the right. Sabrina's been with the program nine years. It's assisted her mom for a few years. Uh, for several years, actually. Now, third year as co-head coach. And she and Melody Martin actually competed in gymnastics in college together at Winona State. Wow, that's fun. She so, opened up with the round of double back handspring back flip. Nice job. Again, as the lead off gym, just like we talked about at Champlain Park, maybe doesn't have the most difficulty, but boy, is she consistent and fun to watch as well. That lead off is so important to set the stage with the scores. Ava's high score tonight uh, came at the vault, 7.925. I love that she's working every beat of this music. This is a really nice choreographed routine. Nice job. Good start for Maple Grove on the floor. As, as always, I think when Jimmy smiles, I'd give him a couple extra tents just for, for that. There's the two back handsprings, in, back handsprings into that back flip. Here's her punch front. Nice height on that. Great. Keeps that momentum going forward roll into that cartwheel. And lastly, she does the round of two back handsprings into the walkout. And she has really lovely form on this. It was a fun routine to watch. I think it's funny, the floor is always what you end on, you know, in your home meets and stuff like that. But it's floor that t that gets you the most tired too. So you've been at school all day, you've warmed up, you've been here. There's Melanie Martin, co-head coach. And on the left, Courtney Simonson. She had competed here at Maple Grove years ago. Jason Bell and the far left, the spotter. Been with this program a number of years as well. So veteran coaching staff here at Maple Grove, really good coaches. That's fun. 7.65 score for Ava Plath. Here's Annika Dufault. Starts out with a double full turn into a one and a half twisting tuck jump. Wow, nice job. Punch front, punch front. Great height on both of those. Again, so far the two routines, the choreography is really neat, kind of fun. Good full twisting split jump there. Of 
credit for that third tumbling pass. Roundup back handspring layout. Great body position, nice straight. Round up two back handsprings into a back tuck. Smiling. Really cute routine, great choreography on that. Love the music. First tummy pass, she does two punch front. So this fulfills her forward tummy. And that's just tough to be able to do two of them in a row. And here's that round of back handspring. Really nice layout, great body position. And then she'll end with her third and final tumbling pass. That round of back handspring, two back handsprings into a back flip. Nice job. Julie Fole will be up next for the Crimson. Maple Grove in their history, seven state meet appearances, most recent coming in 2019. And I don't know that this is a state tournament caliber team, but you see some potential, right, Deb, that this team is going to be one that, that definitely has the potential to improve it and score higher as the season goes on. 7.4 for Annika's routine. Right, and then and they're young. So again, there's just more room for, for growth over the years to come because they, they've they got the, um, the talent. They just have to increase some of the difficulties on some of the events. And I think that's definitely something they can do. Beautiful full twisting split jump right there. Comes that third tumbling pass. On the back handspring layout, nice job, great height. Oh, fun, a switch front walk over. I haven't seen that in a long time. I love when you come up with some originality. You'll see there she went one and a uh, one and a half twist immediately into a one and a half twist tuck jump. So that'll give her some extra points for that twisting connection. Round up two back hand springs into a nice high tuck. She almost over rotated that she was so high. Nice job. Again, a, a fun routine for Maple Grove. So that first front handspring, punch front into the dive roll. The second round off, back handspring into a really nice layout. And lastly, round off. Back handspring, back handspring, nice high tuck. So the back flips can be done in a tuck position, a pike position, or a layout position. You cannot repeat the same tumbling pass, but if you do one in a layout and one in a tuck, there's no deduction for that. Seven point seven seven five for Lily Fold, now Danica Hahn. Really nice switch leap, full twisting switch leap. Great combination there. Nice job. She does a round up layout, half twist immediately into a punch front. There's a full turn into a one and a half twisting tech jump. <laughs> That's cute.
They've had some fun music, some type of music we haven't really seen a whole lot of. Wow, punch tuck front into a pike front. Very difficult. I love the music. It is. It's fun. It's a beat. Makes me want to get up and start dancing. Round up two back handsprings into a really high back tuck. Love the back. <laughs> the worm. There you go. That's good. They use every beat in their choreography. I'm not sure who's doing that, but they what a nice job in the choreography. So this front, she does a round off, lay out half twist immediately into a punch front. Great combination for that. Second one, punch front, tuck front into a pike front. Most people do the pike front first, so that was good. And lastly, round off two back handsprings into a really nice back flip. Nice job. That should score very well for her. She seems pretty happy with that the mm -hmm. routine. Now we're just in for a treat. This is a fun routine from what I got to see in warm up. She's just. Danny Hahn an 8.4, now Sasha Thompson. Look at the smile. She is playing to the crowd, entertaining. This is a type of choreography you see at the college level where it becomes almost, you know, like a show and they're performing. It's so much fun. 11th in the state in the floor exercise a year ago. Front handspring, full twisting front into the double stay leap. Music slowing down a little bit, getting a breath as she heads into the corner. <laughs> Round off one back hands and one and a half twist. And we have to remember she's not that tall, and that was so high, very impressive. Gets ready for a final tumbling pass. Round up two back hands, brings full twist. Boy, you can't pack much more into a routine. I oh, love that. A lot of fun, a little attitude, oh, and a whole a lot, lot of talent. Of sass and a lot of yep. talent. That doesn't score in the nines, I'm just saying. <laughs> You're going to walk them. We're going to come unglued. <laughs> going to voice my opinion. I get fired. <laughs> Here's that first tumbling pass. She does a front handswing into a full twisting punch front. And just, you know, just the little sassy attitude that she had makes this super fun to watch. There is a round back handspring, one and a half twist. I would guess by the end of the season, we may see a double with that. She could certainly do it. And here's the last one, full twist. Again, floats to that landing. And this tuck flip to your stomach it really looks like it hurts but it really doesn't that bad it's like a takeoff from the shishinova that we talk about a lot but that was absolutely fantastic it is about time there is a 9-3 up there so there i'm a happy camper we can go home now <laughs> 9.3 9.1 so a 9.2 .2 for sasha thompson so nice score. again that's a great way to start and get the time to build that score up and then perhaps the not to 9-4, maybe 9-5 in exactly, a couple of months. Exactly, exactly. I don't know how much more difficulty she could put in that routine other than maybe make that um, full twist into a double. But how much fun was that? It was fun to watch. And um, and that's not terribly far off for a state meet score last year, 9.35 at state to place 11th, like I said. So a very good place to start. We are going to take time out. We'll total the final scores, and we'll come back and give you that as we wrap up our coverage. Northwest Suburban Conference Gymnastics from Maple Grove High School after this timeout.
Welcome back to Maple Grove High School. There are the final scores by rotation and team score. Maple Grove winning tonight over Champlain Park 128.1 to 114.850. First meet of the season for Champlain Park. First uh, dual meet for Maple Grove. They were in an invitational last weekend. John Jacobson with Debbie Rasmussen. And Debbie, like we said right at the start of the show, a starting point, right? This a is the base point, you build yes. from here. You know, and I think both teams can be really proud of the performances that they put out tonight. You know, maybe not the scores that we're used to seeing from the teams, but I thought all of the gymnasts, there was a couple of falls and things that they need to improve on. But you can only build from here, and I think Maple Grove had a really strong start for them for this for this season. They have the same five gymnasts on every event, and that's just consistency that they can build from there. And I think Champlain Park, we saw some really good performances from their gymnasts as well. And they have some, they've got some girls that are still out injured, too, and mm -hmm. so they have the potential to get higher score. And, uh, and then John Wine even said in his notes that we're still hoping some girls will come out for gymnastics that that have uh, have some ability and, and hoping they maybe even add that to their roster. So we'll certainly see these scores mm -hmm. rise as the season goes on. Sasha Thompson wins all four events. She tops 36 no in the all-around. Always fun to see her in her senior year. Uh, sixth and final year oh at uh, Maple gosh. Grove. I can't believe we've been watching yeah. her for six years, and I am so, exci so excited to see how she progresses over the year. She has all the difficulty on all four events to do very well this season. I'm wondering what she's going to be able to add to that to increase those scores, but that last floor routine was just awesome to watch. So I'm very excited to see both teams actually first meet of the season in the books, and they should be happy. Each team will have two meets uh, before Christmas. Champlain Park will have its first home meet next week, December 14th against Centennial. And then they'll host an invitation on December 22nd. Maple Grove with a home meet uh, against Blaine here. And then they are at Osseo on December 20th. And so a couple more meets before Christmas yet for both of these teams. Hope we've enjoyed all of the action tonight from Maple Grove High School and for Debbie Rasmussen and all of our great crew here tonight. On CCX, I'm John Jacobson. Final score again, it's Maple Grove over Champlain Park, 128.1 to 114.850.